day average in new cases for the state is 700. Everything started to change for us March 12th. People were panic buying, people were feeling an intense amount of anxiety. Uh, there was a lot of panic. We didn't quite know what was going on. When you accept a job at a grocery store, you don't expect to be risking your life every single day that you walk into work. But when it happened, you just kind of realized that okay, my role is actually essential. I am helping to provide food for people in my community and we have to keep our doors open. And, you know, no matter what happens, if I get sick, if I don't make it through this pandemic, like, I know that I did the work. I usually am pretty level, and this year I am a bit anxious about this. You know, people are depending on this as their livelihood. I know that we are having a couple vendors opt out this season. Farmers market sales are down, and some of the vendors at market are seeing a 50 to 70 percent decline in sales every week. Ours are down as well. There's no financial cushion for first generation farmers, so we worry every day about paying the bills. Coronavirus has had such a big impact on the local food system in the Chippewa Valley. Uh, obviously, restaurants and schools were first closed, and because of that, farmers and producers who supplied to them immediately lost income on top of the restaurants losing income. And everybody thought they had to have two weeks' worth of groceries at home. Uh, we immediately saw a huge increase in demand for especially meat, which put a strain on some of our local meat processors. Meat sales increased by 77%. Total store sales increased by 38%. We were running out of tomatoes, bananas, eggs, ground beef. We were running out of bacon. And luckily for us with local supply chains, we could easily go to people that could fill our shelves sometimes within a day. We had a couple of different producers and farmers that really stepped up when we needed them. We'd probably tripled the amount of pigs sold in March and April as schools started ending and families became under more stress of this carrying on. Um, they stopped calling. Our restaurants have been hit the hardest. Several of them have not reopened and I don't know if they will. And the ones that are opened are just extremely slow. We're at kind of a tricky point of we're not sure where to look for customers or what people are doing. living under this weird new reality. We wanted people to feel safe while also trying to provide some semblance of sanity for staff. What it meant for us, new cleaning protocols. We sanitize the store on an hourly basis. And there's a lot of conversations happening about the food system breaking or being broken. And I personally wouldn't say that the food system is breaking now. I think it has been broken for a long time and this pandemic is forcing us all to see that and see the issues that a large scale food system has as far as supply and demand and being able to keep up with something like this happening. 30 years ago, on average, the family farmer got 37 cents out of every retail food dollar. Last year, according to Farmers Union data, farmers are getting less than 15 cents out of every retail food dollar when people like you and me go to the big box store. If you go straight to the farm, if you shop at farmers markets, those good people get 100 cents out of every retail food dollar. They're gonna spend some of it at the processors, they're gonna spend some of it on fuel, they're gonna spend it on seed, they're gonna spend it on all the things that it takes to keep their lives together. A couple of the larger processors had COVID cases go through their staff, so they had to cut their production and basically down to a quarter of what it, it was before, which is where a lot of those meat shortages came from. Um, but we luckily did not see much of that because our meat comes from local farmers and local producers. 
The problem is, is over the past 20 years, we have six different processors. Now in year 2020, we're down to two. That just will keep us more reliant on the monopolies that have the, the big packing plants. But people have to buy local to support those small businesses. That's the only way we all survive in the Chippewa Valley is if we're keeping that money right here in our community. It's kind of nerve-wracking and an anxiety-ridden couple of months, but <laughs> it is cool to figure out what we have to do to keep moving forward through this. I'm looking forward to when we can have more normalcy to all of it and uh, have a little more fun and, and socializing and have the music back and that kind of thing. I'm looking forward to that. The farmer's market is about 65 to 70 percent of our business. So having the market open is critical. So many of the mom farmers, um, being older folks who don't use technology to like get out their product will be really hard hit for a lot of families, not just for us, but other families who are rely on the farmer's market for their you know, income. So it is very important for us that the market stays open. We just want to support local farmers, local businesses, and we're just so happy that this was open this morning. And I think we both needed some sort of sense of normalcy, and this feels like normalcy back in what we all love in Eau Claire. We had 60 vendors on Saturday that need your support right now more than ever because this is 100% how people live. So I'm, I'm hoping the community can remember why we're there and we'll make it work. Nobody's gonna fix this for us. We gotta fix it ourselves. If people remember the good service and the high quality food that they were able to get from local people during the pandemic, and then, then I think we gotta fight and change.